Hey, welcome everybody to our Foresight uh, webinar series. This, the title of this webinar is going to be the five secrets of mold testing. Uh, and we are going to have a presenter, Don Harding, who is an inspector, and he will give a quick introduction of himself uh, and how he markets mold testing to his clients. So this should be hopefully very helpful for everybody. So this just goes over a quick uh, outline of what we plan to talk about, the five secrets. So educating yourself, your buyer, and the real estate agent. And then when, when to identify when a buyer needs a mold test, how to conduct a, a walkthrough with the buyer, and then how to end the inspection using an order form or something like that. And then how to integrate the Sporesight reports, marketing assets, and training programs. And training programs would be a webinar such as this. So here's myself, Jim Bates. Uh, I'm the sales director for Sporesight and also was the kind of initial <laughs> uh, builder of the concept uh, and working with home inspectors. Uh, as I mentioned, Don Harding, he owns National Bureau of, of Home Inspectors. Uh, so I'll give a quick introduction to Sporesight. You guys probably know most of these things already. And then Don will get into his presentation. So as we as we got our artificial intelligence working to uh, identify and classify and count mold spores and end our air particulates, the next part we identified working with home inspectors and our goal has been to make your lives better. There's several ways that we do that, but that's the all encompassing uh, goal that we're trying to achieve. Uh, so part of that is helping you earn more money on each, on each inspection or ancillary services uh, and provide a valuable service to your clients. Uh, next, provide additional streams of income. So on your home inspection, standalone inspections for mold and indoor air quality. And also you can work with remediators on their clearing samples. Um, we're trying to, to make our operation as simple as possible for you to uh, have you spend the least amount of time while you're on the inspection and after the inspection's over even. Uh, we've, we've made our pricing super affordable, uh, that it'll be affordable for you to make lots of money, you know, working with your home buyers and providing them a service that's within their reach. Uh, also, we're looking to continuously improve and innovate in the space, our reporting and everything we do. So we take comments from inspectors, things that we learn, and we're constantly working to, to update what we do. And then we want to provide great customer service. And kind of the most important part of this making your life better is our report. So you can see on the right, that's the report basically we've mocked up that looks basically like you'll see from the competitors, I call it the matrix. So it's rows and columns with you know mold spores defining the roles and then numbers in the columns. So most inspectors you know, would have to interpret that and tell the, the buyer and the real estate agent what that means. So they're taking on that extra effort. They've got to talk to the buyer and agent and they've got to interpret what that means and take that risk on themselves. With our report, we realized most people just want to know if they have a problem or they don't have a problem. So that first on the left is our report. That first picture shows you it's our at a glance page. Do you have a problem? Do you not have a problem? And it gives you some just basic uh, steps, you know, once you've identified if there, if there is a problem. Uh, then we have our more similarish to the competitor report that follows that. We don't have the picture up here, but that identifies the types of mold and the counts. Then you can see to the right picture, we have pictures of what's actually in the air. And then we also give you particulates in the air. Um, so here's another quick quick thing that's unique about us. Sporesight looks at the entire sample where current labs today, they only have a human being that looks at maybe 30% of that sample. Then they use statistics to normalize the rest of the sample. And that sample would be that, that uh, line of particulate matter that we've got mocked up on a microscope slide. So on the left, you can see we've got clumps of spores in those red circles. So we find that mold spores aren't evenly distributed on a microscope slide. So what we're illustrating here is in a typical um, analysis where they're only looking at 30% of the sample, they could find the clumps or miss clumps. So their, their uh, report could be easily high or low, but we look at everything 100% of the sample. So we are more consistent and more accurate. So with that, I'm going to turn the time over to Don, and he will give you a little bit of background on himself and his business, and then we'll get into the secrets. At the end of each secret, we'll take a couple of questions, but we'll try and move pretty quickly. At the end of the presentation, we will open uh, up the, the, the two other questions. So without further ado, Don, uh, give us a little bit of background, and I've got a slide here that 
goes through some of your numbers. Sure. Uh, thanks, James. I want to thank Sports Hype for letting me come on this uh, webinar. I'm pretty stoked and excited about it. Um, I've been in the home inspection business for 25 years. So I've run uh, about eight home inspection companies, and also I'm involved in the National Bureau of Home Inspectors. Um, what we do is we help inspectors increase their revenue up to 40 percent. And part of that is, is uh, mold. And so that's why I'm so excited about this, to be able to talk with you and, and explain what I've done in the past and what we're doing right now. Um, so I think I'm going to go right into it. Uh, I was going to give you some numbers here just to help you understand um, where in my money. Uh, 19, uh, or 2009, I had 239 inspections, and I was spending about an average of uh, six hours per inspection, um, which grossed me uh, $96,000. Um, but in 1999, I brought on a partner, and he, he's got a background of uh, marketing. And then we took my expertise in the home inspection and then took his marketing, and we put it together, and it just made a whole world of difference. And so you can see the 2022 numbers um, because of the economy, interest rates and things, some of my inspections, uh, the amount of inspections I've done have come down. It's uh, 191 inspections, an average of four hours at that time after uh, meeting with my new partner and, and explaining to me what I need to do to cut down on my hours and bring up my revenue. So in 22, um, I was at 110,000 total income coming in, which was an increase of $14,000. And basically, it decreased um, my time that I put into it, my hours, by 620, which is actually incredible. Um, what that is, is that's basically a four months savings on my time that I did not have to put in or actually... Um, inspections that I did. I didn't even have to take uh, any liability or anything for it. And I was only working part-time. So those numbers are incredible. In 2019, I was making around $67 uh, an hour. And then in uh, 21, I was up to $144 uh, an hour. So a big increase there. And the environmentals is basically, truthfully, that's what made most of it. Um, the other part is, is, uh, the National Bureau of Home Inspectors has a really awesome app for home inspectors that can save time and uh, they can actually do a home inspection in four hours and actually send it the report when they're done before they go home. So they're not home doing two or three, six hours worth of work per inspection. And that's what we teach. All right. So slide one. Sorry, Don, but this is the educating. So. Get right into it. No, you're fine. Just hand the ball over to me. I, that's <laughs> great. So <You're> right. <laughs> basically what it is, is uh, we teach people in, uh, to educate yourself, know the basics about mold, your radon, uh, meth, and all those other ones that you do with your home inspection. Um, and, and, and you can educate yourself. And there's another presentation here, it looks like, that will name a few places that you can go to get educated on mold and meth and stuff like that. But um, you got to know the basics, right? You, you've got to know a little bit about mold. You've got to understand it and, and health issues and structural issues as a home inspector. So you, you need to know. And then I found out too, that you need to educate your realtor. That's probably the most important. I mean, you've probably gone as home inspectors, right? We've gone to a home inspection. We do our walkthrough and then we got a realtor that, that uh, we're talking to the buyer about mold, meth, radon, and so on. And a lot of times the realtor will say, no, I don't think you need that. You know, they think it's the benefit of the buyer, but actually it's not. Um, it, it's actually helping the buyer, helping the realtor, and also the home inspector. Um, a lot of it's liability issues and stuff like that. Um, but you need to educate your realtor to let them know that it's important that we do um, our environmentals along with the home inspection because basically we're we're protecting the uh, buyer's investment and also their health and we'll get into that a little bit further down the road here um, types of molds so 
I've gone to a home inspection and we'll see some surface mold. Realtor will be there with a walkthrough. Oh, that's just surface mold. Don't worry about it. Uh, but we don't know that's just surface mold. That's why we do an indoor air quality test. And we can check what types of molds it is and if the mold is elevated or not. That's important. I mean, I, I've done tests. I've hundred, hundreds of tests, probably even into the thousands. You know, and that black mold, Stachybotrys, you don't know unless you test for it. I mean, if I could, you know, put my eyes on mold all day long and tell you what species it is and what type of fungi, I'd be worth a lot of money. But I can't tell you that. That's why I go to Sportsite. They tell me that. Um, um, also, uh, we just switched switch there. Sorry, no. You're fine. So um, solve the problem. Keep the deal on track. So figure out what's going on. You know, don't kill a deal. That's the first thing when I see a new realtor. I say, you know what? I don't kill deals. The house kills deals, but I don't. And so... You don't want to overemphasize and, and make it sound like they're going to die or their structure's in bad shape. In most cases, it's not, but there could be some structural damage because of mold, but keep the deal on track. And then um, educate your buyer. Kind of went over that a little bit. Um, explain uh, why sorry. we offer mold tests and, on every home. And I do on every home. There are a couple homes that I... I offer it, but I feel like sometimes there's no need. It could be like brand new construction. Um, they're just buying the house and obviously they don't really want to know because for one, there probably isn't any mold. So, but that'd be the only other reason. And I know we're going to go to some slides here. That's going to explain a little deeper on that. So let's go to the next slide there, James. All right, here you go. Um, training courses. Training is really important. Knowledge as a home inspector, I know you all know that. Um, Internachi and, and ICE and, and some other type of training that you could receive online. Um, it looks at sports sites, got some training videos. Uh, they're there to help you. They've helped me. Uh, a great source. And, and James is a great source. I don't know if he wants me to put his name out there, but I, I tell you what, he's, he's helped me from day one since they started their business a few years ago or whatever it was. I don't remember, but I actually called James up because he was in Utah, uh, Orm. And uh, I, we actually uh, ran him over the coals and we were trying to find out they knew what they were doing. Um, we used several, several uh, mold companies and, you know, I've used them all in Salt Lake and other places in the United States. And James answered all the questions. He dotted the I's and crossed the T's very comfortable. The prices were very competitive. They're super fast. Um, I, I can tell you, I can do a mold test today. And if I get it to James by four o'clock tomorrow, I've already got my report. That is uh, unheard of. And then also you can go to epa.gov, obviously, to be educated. And then obviously there are states that do have state requirements. You might have to jump through a few loops, be licensed, I'm in the state of Utah. We absolutely have no requirements whatsoever when it comes to home inspection and environmental testing. Okay, James? Okay. So I'm going to see if we had any couple of questions uh, in the chat channel. Uh, I don't okay. think we've got any. So we'll go back to the presentation. And here's our, our second one. When does a buyer need a mold test? Okay, I've kind of answered that, but I can go a little deeper into that. Um, a lot of times our realtors will provide sellers disclosures about what's going on with the property. And then that's a really valuable information there that uh, when we go to the home inspection, we can read that over and it could reveal issues going on with the home, such as a past flood, um, uh, leaks through the basement, uh, pipes, leaks, all kinds of different leaks. Water, water, water. That's what I tell all of the buyers. I say when you go into home, that's the worst thing that can, one of the worst things that can happen to your home. And, and homes that are older all have some type of water issues in the home. Um, also, we, we talk to the family at the end of the inspection. Um, a lot of times, some, not a lot of times, but sometimes they'll opt out and want to not do a home inspection because there wasn't signs of water or issues there. 
And then my last question, you know, I tell them that we can do the mold test, which is also we call an indoor air quality test. And we'll ask the family members if anybody has any allergies. And then they say they do. And then we tell them that we can look for allergens and stuff like that, and, you know, look for fungi and mold and dust and background debris and all kinds of stuff, insects. Uh, someday you need to get a hold of James and look at his new slide on an uh, insect. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture, James. Yeah. You need to post that. Okay. We found, um, what's we found that? a really great picture today on a, on a microscope slide, an air sample. It was actually a tiny, tiny claw. You could actually see the claw. And we find insect parts, you know, periodically, especially in very dirty houses. So we do, uh, our software will detect and classify insect parts, but we don't put those in the report. But we had a super cool, it was a very moldy home and there was this microscopic insect claw, looked just like a claw from a crab. So anyway, I'll let you go. Yeah. Yep, so that's the end of that. Let's see if we've got some questions here. Uh, Looks like we're ready to just keep plugging through. So no problem. So see, but if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask. My phone number is on there too. You can call me at any time. Yep. Think of some. Okay. So the buyer walkthrough, the root secret sauce. Yeah. Um, my partner and I call this the secret sauce. We teach this to home inspectors throughout the U.S. right now. Um, we got a pretty good following going on and, uh, uh, the seller's disclosures indicate past uh, water and mold issues, which we talked about. Uh, mold growth, we talk about that. And, and what I do is when I say that during the inspection, that's really important because I'm doing my walkthrough right at the end of the inspection. And I got my buyer with me, maybe a realtor. And then I'll point out, like today I did an inspection this morning and I was in a basement and there was past water damage. There was some staining. Uh, they actually cut the sheetrock two feet up. Uh, above the floor and they put in new sheetrock and some more. So you can tell there had been an issue there. Um, also, wh when I see those things like that, I, I kind of like tell them, you know what, I really recommend that you do an indoor air quality. And I do that at that time. So it kind of plants a seed. So when I get ready for my walkthrough, I can uh, revisit that. Um, odors is really important. Uh, we do crawl spaces here in Utah. We got a lot of basements. You smell musty, moldy smells. You know, I automatically recommend that they do a mold test. And, and, and it's not all about the money. I got to tell you the truth. It's not. It's about protecting my buyer, my client, protecting their family and its health. And also we're protecting their investment. That's why I look at it as a home inspector. Uh, location of areas that are prone to high humidity. Um, uh, attics. Attics is really prone to that. Um, I go to attics sometimes. I don't know if you guys have seen that where attics are actually black and it looked like there had been a fire in there. And actually the, the trusses and the uh, rafters can be checked uh, pattern. And then you can rub your finger on it and it's just like uh, uh, burnt wood, charcoal, but it's not. It is actually dead mold that could get into the house. So that's another reason that you'd want to check for mold in the house, the indoor air quality. Um, if it's an older home, too. too. Uh, especially, I day it was a little over 100 years, you know, and I I asked them for the indoor air quality just because of the age of the house. Um, going back to the high humidity areas, obviously basements and crawl spaces. And that takes me into the last one here, crawl space. Mold spores can enter into the home in livable space, especially when you have an HVAC furnace located in the crawl space. Um, the, most of the time, those ducts are pretty loose. Some of them on the older homes have that asbestos white tape. Uh, there's nothing really sealing the ducts up. The furnace is sitting there sucking air from that crawl space, pulling in fungi and mold spores into livable space. And so... As a home inspector, we do not test the crawl space unless we're asked. We only test the livable space. And so it, it and, and I, most of my inspections I do with the crawl space, I usually get the, uh, the mold test just because of that reason. People are worried about their health and their small children and grandma. Okay. Right, so like in an attic or in a crawl space, you could do a surface test. 
that you would just do the air testing in the conditioned livable space. Correct. Right. Okay. I don't think we have any questions. Jim, so let's. Yeah. We actually do have questions if you look in the host chat. Let's see. Am I not looking in the host chat? Sorry, guys. This is my first presentation. So I've got chat, host. Okay, we do. Because I was, yeah, last time I went to the private one. Okay. Oh, so that's just you guys. I saw your names there and I didn't realize that was not coming from inspectors. So let's go down. Uh, start with this last one. Ben asked, final question, is the airflow on the Sporesight air pump adjustable? And that is, so the pump that we sell with the starter kit, I call it the A, and that does not have an adjustable uh, airflow, so it's not calibratable. Uh, we will be coming out with our own pump in July, which will have a calibration. But that, but that starter air pump, it's it's just designed for home inspectors who aren't currently doing uh, mold tests, air air tests, that they have an inexpensive way to get started. So it's really important with that pump to keep the batteries fresh. So each job, uh, you're sampling at the same volume of air. And those pumps are calibrated at the factory. So they're plus or minus just a little bit. Uh, but we do encourage inspectors once they get going uh, to buy, to figure out what kind of pump they want. Do they want a pump with all kinds of features? It's battery operated or can they use a less expensive pump that's a plug and pump? So that's a great question. And I appreciate that because we encourage guys to, to step up to nicer pumps what's, once they realize, hey, this is a great business to be in and we're going we're gonna to get serious about this. So um, I'm going to... I do, I do want to put an input there. So when it comes to the pumps, it only takes uh, two jobs to pay for your pump at a $250 pump. And that's what I use. Right. You've got the Zephon Z-Lite, I believe. You do. I do. So that's a great pump for about $230. Um, Zephon sells that pump. Um, and then you can go all the way up to pumps that are $850 that are auto calibrating. And so it really just depends on what your use case is and, and what you want. But yeah, Don's been using that Z light pump for years. So I have a couple of them. Yeah. <clears throat> it works great. What's nice about it is, is I was using a local lab here in, in Utah and um, we went with Sporesight and we went down to five minutes to 15 liters on our pump. And uh, it's actually saved me some time. But we were doing 10, 10 minutes. So that was 30 minutes with three cartridges. So, you know, versus 15, the way we're doing it now with Sporesight. Right. So our, our sampling procedure is a five minute sample at 15 liters per minute. And that's what our little egg pump is calibrated to. And that's what we want inspectors to use. When you over, when you do long samples, you can overpopulate the air particulates on the gel pad inside that cassette. And once something's on that gel pad, nothing else is going to stick to it. So if you oversample, uh, you'll have things start bouncing off the gel pad. So we won't get an accurate uh, count. So we want you to go five minutes at 15 liters per minute. Uh, and, and I just want to say one more thing there, James, with the uh, tracks. Uh, Posi track. Pause. Posi track. I got it backwards. <laughs> I love those because they do have the gel. I was using another cartridge that just basically had a piece of uh, scotch tape in it. That's what I call it as the slide. And and things bypass that and don't stick to it that well, especially in cold weather. I've noticed a difference with right. posi tracks that the cold weather actually it's 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 a better it does a better job for us. That's awesome. Yeah, you hadn't told me yet, so it's good to know. Okay, yeah. that next next question up. Uh, ben is just saying thanks so much for you know sharing your experience with us. To paraphrase, uh, his question is: Here in Georgia, we have a ton of humidity. Any unconditioned space that does not have some airflow will have some issues with mold. Uh, notable problem areas we see frequently are detached structures and in unfinished basements. And then he asks, uh, what would you do to a client requesting a mold test on an unconditioned space? Um, I've been asked maybe a couple of times in 25 years about that. Um, well, obviously, I explained if we got a detached garage, which I did one this week that had a ton of mold. <laughs> um, 
I, I let them know visually that it's full of mold. They need to get rid of it, cut it out or do whatever they need to do. If they want me to do a sample, I can. Uh, I basically uh, do my mold samples in livable space. Um, if it's attached to the house and if it's a crawl space or an unfinished basement that actually would not be livable space, if they want me to, I will. Obviously, I charge them more if I'm going to use more than two or three spore traps. So, yes, I'm willing to do that, but obviously I charge them more. Right. And, and just to add a little bit more, at Sporesight, we encourage everybody to do an outdoor sample along with their indoor samples. Uh, that allows us to give you that at-a-glance page. If, if an outdoor sample is not included with the, with the job, then we cannot generate um, the at-a-glance page because we can't show you the, you know, or do highlights of, of areas with higher, with higher densities of mold spores. We can only give you the counts. So um, it's- I, I um, always do and always will do an outside uh, test. And like you said, that's a comparison. So like, let's say that you got uh, penicillin aspergillus or something outside and it's like 200 count. And then you do the inside livable space and it's 2000. Yeah, you got a mold problem. But if you don't have anything compared to that, maybe that's normal in a livable space in that area, unless you have the outside to compare. And right. you will find once in a while, the outside will read zero. It all depends, like snow on the ground, stuff like that. Mold actually is more active when it's raining. As long as you take your equipment electrical and make sure it's covered, you can still do a mold test outside. Just remember that. Yeah, so we encourage inspectors, even if it's snowing, raining, or just an, a nice day, take that outdoor sample. Uh, it'll give you a better, a better report. Um, uh, so that's a great question. I was just trying to think of anything else to add to that. Uh, let's see. Hope we answer it. Hope we answer it. <laughs> yeah. Hope right. we got to the question. If not, you can ask it at the very end. Uh, so here's another question that's similar to what we've been talking about. How many samples do you take on an average mold inspection? How many okay. air? How many surface? And do you? How much do you charge per sample? So I'll just I'll start with the how much do you charge per sample. Spore site, we charge $20 per sample, and that's the same for air and surface sampling. So then you can ship it to us with our return labels, which are $39, or and those are two-day FedEx labels, or you can ship it with your own label, and then there's no charge for shipping. It's just the samples, $20 times the number of samples you send in. So, so Don, the other ones were how many samples do you take on an inspection and how many air versus surface samples? Okay. Okay. Um I mainly, I, I'll do some surface samples, but I don't do very many. I got to be honest with you. They may be a handful a year. Um, a lot of times if we do a surface sample, it's because a, a renter is trying to get out of their lease and they're saying there's mold there and they want to present that to their landlord. If you do a surface sample, you're always going to find mold because there's mold there where you're doing your surface sample. But when it goes back to uh, indoor air uh, sampling um, in Utah, uh, we got some ramblers. We'll do the, the main level and we always do the basement too. And then we do the outside. That was, that's three cartridges that we would use. Um, for that, we charge uh, $295 for a quality test. Now, if they've got a third level, I'll ask them if they want to. Like it's split entry. There'd be, you know, a couple different levels, multi. You could do each floor. I can tell you this is uh, from my training and everything that, uh, when you actually put your spore trap on your hose and everything, circumference-wise, it reaches out 500 feet. And so it, it'll do a lot of area. So that's like 1,000 feet, five on each side. Um, so, yeah, $295 with three spore traps. And then I charge $75 per spore trap after that. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so we've got, we'll do another question while we're here before we get to the final, the final uh, slide. Uh, let's see, an inspector says, I saw your uh, sample report uh, had a basement as one of the locations for an air test, but I also have been trained that you should not do an air test in a basement. Presumably it's a finished basement. Would it be okay for an air test, but comment on a 
finished or an unfinished basement. You want me to answer that? Yeah, you're, I'll leave it to the pro. Every basement, whether finished or unfinished, that's where you have your uh, moisture problems most of the time. And people want to know what they're breathing. So here in Utah, our basements have a lot of furnaces in them, finished or unfinished. So right back again with the crawl space, you're actually pulling those spores right up through your heating ducts into your livable space. I always, always do a basement. Crawl space, we don't do crawl spaces here unless somebody asks us to do it. Most of the real estate contracts and the buyers are concerned about livable space and what they're breathing in that area. And that's a great point. We had an inspection probably four months ago. It was in a small town in Utah and it was an unfinished basement. So it was just the cement walls, but they did an air test down there and there was a ton of mold. So the moisture was seeping through the cement and then there was mold growth. So that's a great question. And, and, and sometimes mold is hidden. So I want to, I want to go through something real quick with you. So it's been a few years ago. Um, I had a guy call me up from uh, Eagle Mountain, Utah. He's a vet and he has a, uh, when I went over there to do just a mold test, I, I noticed I kind of looked around. I don't do mold inspections, but I, I kind of looked around and found out that he had a 200 gallon fish tank. And then I went into his bathrooms and I tried the fans because I seen exhaust fans. I seen a lot of moisture on the windows and those both were broken and didn't work. So he's home with three kids. His wife is working. He's not. They're all sick. And he's saying, Don, there's really something going on here. I don't know what it is. So I decided to do a mold test. So I ended up doing that mold test on that. And when I got my results back, it was 250,000 spore count of the Stachybotrys mold. I went, wow. whoa, where is this coming from? Because I didn't <laughs> see anything. He's never seen anything. And so... I said, you know what? I called him up and said, man, it's, it's high. Uh, I know you guys are all sick and your kids are not even going to school. I said, I'll drive clear out to Eagle Mount, which was about an hour drive. I didn't charge him, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to go find out what's going on with this house. So I, I searched, flashlight, attic, everything. I couldn't find it. Finally, mm -hmm. I went into the master uh, bedroom. And inside there on the north side, there was one of those mirrors that you stand up like the women look at their shoes and stuff. I pulled that away from the wall and it was just caked with mold. I mean, it was three to four inches thick. Holy and, cow. and I brought him and showed him it, showed that to him. It, it was terrible. And it was only the footprint of the mirror. So you didn't see it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he cleaned it all up and never heard back from him. I didn't call him back to find out, but I, I'm sure that took care of it. So that's, wow. that's just a case in point. You don't know unless you test. Yeah. Okay. So secret four, sorry, how to end the inspection with an order form. Okay. First of all, explain to the buyers um, the importance of mold, meth, and radon. We do it all. Um, obviously, we're protecting their health. We're protecting their investment. And that's really important. Um we could go into all this and explain all the sicknesses and all that. I'm not going to do that at this time, maybe in another webinar that we might have to explain those. Uh, uh, mold, remember signs as we went through the walkthrough. That's what I talked to my buyers about at the end of the walkthrough is say, do you remember me showing you the where there had been a flood, uh, the stain on the baseboards and things like that, the smells that we smelled? I reiterate that at that time. Um, and then I would highly recommend that they do mold tests and protect their investment and their family need to know the types and elevated elevation levels of mold. So we talked about that. You want to know if it's elevated, if it's normal, and then you want to know what types of mold. Um, I, I can't tell you, I have this happen to me all the time. Buyers will say, well, is that going to affect me that high of a mold? Or is that particular mold going to affect me? I don't know. Everybody is allergic to different types of molds and they, the respiratory system or headaches or whatever react different to everybody. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm not an in industrial hygienist, right? So I, I really don't answer those questions like that. I just tell them you could take that into an allergist, um, your mold sample, and have them look at it and see, if, you know, find out if you're allergic to any of those molds. 
but obviously structural too. Um, I've seen homes where some of the structural girders and stuff like that, trusses, uh, rafters, things like that, have pretty much lost their integrity because of mold. Um, then we have what we call an order form. Do you have a copy of that on the next screen? We do. Okay. This is my go-to. This, this is, I, I, I held back on this until yesterday. This was my secret sauce for years. Um, my partner came on and said, yeah, you can share it because it's not his secret sauce because, uh, <laughs> He, he does very well of educating people during that walkthrough. I do too, but I'm going to give you an example of why I'm using this order form and how it developed. It's about 20 years old. Um, my partner actually updated it and make it look clean and good. But, um, and when I say it's my partner, it's my business partner. Just get that back. But uh, <laughs> make Rich laugh. Um, so, I got two cases here. I, I think I'm going to tell you the one. I'll tell you one. It didn't have to do with mold. Um, so I did an older house here in Salt Lake, built in the 1940s. It had galvanized pipe. Folks move in. Um, two years later, they uh, um, they took their daughters in, well, two daughters, and they took them in to the doctor, did some tests on them, and find they had lead poisoning. Hmm. And I'd already had this order form in some form, um, but I did have on there and I don't have it on there now, but I did have uh, lead and you can put that on there too, if you want, um, especially like lead in water and stuff like that. That's the reason drinking waters are now we changed it. Okay. So we can test for lead, but what happened was is she went to sue the, um, the realtor because they sold them a house that had lead in it. And now they're, kids are having some mental issues and headaches and stuff because of the galvanized pipe leaches lead. Hmm. Um, so you know that. And so um, she, the realtor called me up and said, Hey, Don, uh, did you offer that to them? So I went back through my paperwork and guess what I found? I found my order form and it was for that customer that went through there and checked off. No, I don't want water. I don't want to know about the lead. They didn't even do sewer scope. They didn't even do a radon meth or mold. I can tell you, I remember her not doing anything. So I sent that back then. I faxed it over to the realtor. Realtor called me back about a week later and said, hey, Don, you just got my broker out of a lawsuit by having this order form signed because we have, I don't see it on there. Oh, there it is. It goes up to the right. So it's a, it's a full order form. It's kind of divided up there, but this is a full order form. We have the buyer sign it, and then the home inspector signs it. And so basically what it says real quick, because this is going to help you when it comes to the mold test. Basically what we say here on the little star right up here, it says, please initial each additional services below. And they need to initial it, not just check it. Yes, if you, if you initial it yes below for any or all services indicated a request for that service, initial no indicates a request that the additional services not be conducted. No means you accept for damages and all building and health conditions which remain undiscovered. That is a killer. That, that I, I love it. And not only that, it's a mental thing, too, for the buyer. They're saying, uh, yeah, there's mold. I see it. We can smell it. But no, I don't care. So I'm going to say no to that. Or you got the ones that say yes because you mentally put it in there. I am initially no to that, or am I going to initial yes to that? Well, I'm going to initial yes. Same thing with the other environmentals that are on here. So it, that is, I call it my secret sauce. Yeah. And it, and it, and it works, but you're willing to, uh, James has a copy of that up there. I'm sure he can get you a copy of it. You can mix it up, change your name, change your logo, whatever you want on there. We don't care. Um, go ahead, James. Yeah. So that's great. I mean, it's nice, you know, that you guys are, are sharing that, you know, with our viewers and that, you know, they can, 
look at this, modify it, use it how they want, but it can be a, a valuable tool um, you know, in their inspections. So our, and our goal at Sporesight is just help you be the best inspector. And, and as we said, you know, help make your life better uh, in as many ways as we can. So I uh, really like to thank Don for coming on here with us. Um, the last one is just integrating Sporesight reports, marketing assets. Um, so this is probably a good one for me to just review uh, because sure. this is more about Sporesight. Uh, so we have assets that we have provided on our website for you, like a, a brochure that you could use on your website uh, when you're marketing saying, hey, I'm offering mold testing services. So there's a report uh, or a marketing flyer that will go through what they can expect with our report. We also have a copy of the report that you can uh, put in your website to show people what they will be getting. Uh, we're working on some uh, social media posts that you'll be able to post up. We'll do some small videos that would be great to put up on your social media, um, things like that. Uh, also, uh, we're going to try and put some marketing things together to help you network and provide some information to real estate agents and, and others. Um, also, you've got the the other uh, other things like Internachi, Ashi, Working RE Magazine. Uh, we're members of all these things and we advertise with them and they can be a great resource for you. So we encourage you guys to you know work with groups like that. Um, so with I, that. I do have ahead. a finished note here and, I, and I've got to say this. I've been doing this 25 years. I know I keep saying that. I know Rich is tired of it. Uh, probably James too. But I've never seen a mold report lie. So if I'm in a basement or a house, whatever, and I see mold and I know it's going to come in high, it always comes in high. You know what I mean? Because I've seen it and I've done the test and now the report. Um, there are some basements or some homes that I do that I don't think it's going to come in high, and it does. But it doesn't lie, and those folks find out where it's coming from. That's really important. That takes a lot of responsibility off the home inspector because if you don't do this, then you could be liable that you actually missed something that you couldn't see, although it might be there right in your front, in front of your eyes. So that's why it's so important to do the mold test. Another thing, too, bar none, spore sites – report is the best you'll ever going to find out there. I've used them all. I don't hardly get a call back at all from my buyer or the realtor. It's black and white. It tells them exactly what it is. So I would highly use Foresight. I love them and they're not paying me. It's not a paid advertisement. So just so you know. <laughs> I had to twist Don's arm. <laughs> Don, <laughs> right guy. You know how well I like Foresight. I do. I really appreciate it. And one thing that you jogged my memory, we did a job shortly before Christmas and it was an Arizona uh, job that came in. It was an, it was eight samples uh, or it was an eight plex. So there were nine samples, an outdoor and, and eight units. And the, the project, so it was in Arizona, the project had been recently renovated. So the inspector, after he got the report, he called me up. He's like, hey, Jim, can you go through my report with me? Because I'm not sure how to approach my buyer. He wanted me to do a mold test. I didn't see any signs of mold. But when we when I looked at the report with them, seven of the eight units had significant mold showing in the air. And they were one thing that our report counts is there's as, aspergillus penicillin mold grows in these little chains and they and the mold spores break apart as they get further from the growth structures. So when you see the chains, it's an indication, a strong indication that you're close to the source of growth. So this report had tons of these chains. We're the only lab that I'm aware of that, you know, counts the number of chains and is looking for those chains on every report we go out. So we're reporting on these chains. So this thing had, and you could see it in the pictures. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm like, okay, well, you've got the pictures. So this should be a pretty easy conversation. It's like somewhere you've got mold coming into these units. So as we chatted about it, he he came up with the idea and I haven't heard back from him, but I, I do want to, to follow up. He thinks it was in the HVAC system that had not had any renovation. So it was right. blowing through the ductwork. So amazing for this guy to find that, you know, before, you know, after this renovation, he starts renting this, you know, complex out to renters. So thought I'd just throw that in. Uh, so we got one more question in uh, from Darren. 
uh, the question is, I've done a few mold tests. When I've seen elevated levels of mold, the obvious next step, the next step is to, sorry, the obvious next step is to, is what to do about it. Most of my remediation folks say that they will only look for obvious signs of moisture intrusion uh, in parentheses, uh, e.g. obvious water leak. So my question is, how do I provide good direction if an elevated level is detected? If remediation, if the remediation company doesn't see an obvious source of mold creation, then what's the next step? Um, find another remediation company. So I do have two or three of them here locally in Salt Lake. Um, I actually put them in my report because I put a report of before spore site with all my customer information and things. And then I give them uh, examples of what, or what they should do if the mold's high and who to contact. And so the folks that I use for mold remediation, they'll go there and they'll try to figure it out whether they see mold or not. And so... That's the best I can tell you. Um, I, I know I got a case in point here real quick, and maybe this is going too long, but uh, my partner, when he first started out, um, he found some mold in a shower behind a tile. He asked the buyer to uh, do a mold test, and she declined it. Um, she, later on when she moved in, uh, they were moving some furniture and stuff, and they pulled up the carpet to restretch it, and they found mold under the carpet. She declined the mold test, but she was really angry about that. So hmm. um, we tried to tell her we offered it to you. We've got a signed contract saying you didn't want it. So that's why it's important. Um, so get a mold remediation company that will work with you that will go over there and find it. The mold remediation company here for any type of mold They'll go do it for free to evaluate, but then they usually start around 3000 for a cleanup and that's where it starts. Hmm. Yeah. So the key on, on these is usually there's a fix, you know, it's like, it shouldn't kill most deals. Like, okay, let's find what is causing the problem and resolve it. So the goal is not to like destroy deals. The, the goal is to protect the people that, you know, in the homes that, that needed a mold test. So, exactly. yep. yeah. Okay. We've got another question. Uh, we've still got, you know, 10 minutes if we want to keep going or we can end early if we don't get any more questions, but this question. Uh, so Brian, what about crawl spaces in Washington? Crawl spaces are more common than basements. <laughs> right. So, uh, is he talking about molding crawl spaces? I would assume that would be the question. How do, but how do we mediate that? Um, maybe Brian, yeah, Brian, if you could put in it in the chat a little bit more detail about what you want and we'll jump ahead and then we'll come back to that. So Don is asking, do you call it mold testing or air quality testing to the client? Okay. Um, I actually use both terms. Um, when I see physical visual mold, then I call it mold testing. I, I think the proper name for it is probably indoor air quality, which is also going to do mold and other fungi and, uh, you know, insect debris and dust and all that. But that's what I call it. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. We do call think, it both. Yeah. And I do. That's always been a question I've kind of had because I, I've talked to inspectors and they do, they use indoor air quality a lot as a term and also mold tests. I usually use mold and indoor air quality um, when I'm talking to people. And we add indoor air quality because the spore site report, uh, we report on the particulate in every report we do. So I know some labs require an extra fee to report on the particulate matter. So as you guys probably know, we, we call out uh, skin fragments. We count human versus animal skin fragments. It's actually really easy to tell the difference um, when I created the data set, I broke those out into two different things. I didn't even know that I had done it until our expert, you know, told me, Hey, how you just separated human from animal skin fragments. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, but we, we report on those particulates and that really is an indication of, you know, what an indoor air quality of, of that home along with the mold spores. So we're going to be coming out with some new, uh, graphics and some that will show 
it will be directed toward the indoor air quality of the home. Similar to the mold spore counts, we're going to have an indoor air quality kind of using particulates to, to gauge that because Sporesite does not collect uh, any gases. So VOCs, things like that, we, we don't report on things like that. We can't collect things like that. So hopefully that kind of answers that one. Um, let's see. I haven't had a follow up on the, on that question from Brian, so we'll hold off on that for a second. One, one thing I want to get the inspectors excited about, and, and that would be that um, my inspection fees right now for a thousand square foot or less is four hundred and twenty five dollars. So after the first of the year with gas and, and price of groceries, I upped it twenty five to fifty bucks. That's just my start, and I could go to a house and make. $400, $425. But when I add my mold, meth, radon, anybody want to call me up, I can give you my receipts and show you what I do. There's a lot of times I'll go out of that house between five and $16,000, or excuse me, 16. I wish it was 15,000. <laughs> You'd be working for me, James. I'm, uh, I would be working for you. <laughs> 1600 I just did one yesterday for 1600 So what I'm saying is, yeah, it's about the money, but at the same time, you are protecting the realtor yourself and the buyer. But it, it's, you know, with the price of gas, it's kind of nice to go to a home inspection and come away with a good chunk of money to help pay yeah. for your expenses. So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, a great thing. To, when you provide, you know, people that need it, a home that needs it, I mean, it's a super valuable service. And you're only spending, you know, 15 minutes, maybe extra, call it a half an hour to drop off the samples, um, you know, at FedEx or something like that. So for minimal effort and cost, you can be, you know, providing this valuable service and, you know, getting a good bump up in the same amount of work, basically the same job, but you're increasing that revenue. One thing I thought I would add to that previous question that asked about indoor air quality versus mold testing you know, so the one thing the mold testing is really trying to identify is, is there, you know, some kind of a water issue or moisture issue? So, I, so they're both good, good to use and define that. So I'll leave that one at that. So Bob asked a question, a uh, comment on testing for meth. So I'll, I'll lead off on this and let Don comment, but at Sporesight, we don't do, we don't have any kind of meth reporting. We don't detect that. So I'll let Don answer the rest of that. So what I would like to tell you on that is um, here in Utah, we do a lot of meth tests. I would suggest that you would call me, National Bureau of Home Inspectors. We have seven inspectors in Utah, and we do all our mold tests through Sporesite, and then our meth is through another lab. So if you want to know more about how to test or where to get kits, give us a call. Okay. Uh, let's see. Terry asked, do you find pathogens other than mold? So it's probably a good one for me. Right. So pathogens, I'm not very good at what that definition is, but I would say really, no, we're not looking for any, anything other than mold and air particulate. So things like uh, bacteria or, you know, something like that is gets so small that we are not looking for. We, we have a break, a cut point where things that are, you know, beyond ultra fine or even ultra fine particulate, we, we find some ultra fine particulate and we, we count and classify everything that we find in the air, mold spores and particulates. We break into a third group and we're going to roll out more information on that probably sometime, you know, late next year um, for our report. But yeah, so pathogens, things like that, we we do not report on, but we do break everything we find out into greater than 10 micron size, 2.5 to 10 micron size, and then less than 2.5 micron size. And the air sample, once you get into the less than 2.5, we collect a lot of that, but that becomes so fine that the air air cassettes don't count everything. Some of that blows around the, the sample surface. So we get we get a good count, but not a perfect count on that ultra fine particulate. But we, then we do count everything and size it. So I don't know if that helps with that answer. But yeah, so no pathogens. Okay, so um, here's some follow-up on the on the crawl spaces. Um, sorry about that. Are you referring to the test crawl spaces? So Brian says, uh, yes. If we should test, if we should test 
let's see. Should we test? Yeah. Yeah, uh, if we should test them, if they are super common since Washington is such a damp state in general. So I guess he's saying, should they test uh, the crawl spaces because there there is so much you know dampness in Washington? So would you do, uh, so you've got a super damp crawl space. Would you do a test down there or what would you do? I only do a crawl space if I'm asked to do one. Um, I particularly choose not to um, because I'm doing livable space above it and those fungi and uh, uh, molds are not getting into the livable space, although I do crawl in a crawl space that is uh, over 24 inches. Sometimes I'll get on my belly and crawl around, but I visually can see it. Uh, a lot of it grows on top of the soil or onto a cellulose product such as wood. And then I take pictures and I report on it that way. The only thing that I have a concern about is if you're gonna go start doing crawl spaces, you're gonna end up with a lot more mold spores and, and fungi and stuff. And those are gonna start killing deals. I, 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 I report it this way. I visually do it, take pictures and recommend further evaluation <clears throat> by a licensed uh, professional. That's how I handle my crawl spaces. I've only had one in 25 years that asked me to do a crawl space. So you would do the, the first floor above the crawl space to see if you're getting any mold spores from the crawl space that are coming into the living area, but you wouldn't do the crawl space? No, I don't because I'm putting a hurdle in front of this deal. And if it's not getting in a crawl space and they're not breathing it, there's no problem that way then I'm not gonna put a hurdle there to perhaps lose this deal for the realtor or the buyer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, looks like, uh, question is what if they don't have a basement? Do you do the it, crawl space instead? So no, never, I never do a crawl space, not unless I'm asked to do it. And if there is a crawl space and I can physically get in it, I inspect it and I take pictures and I report on it that way on any fungi that I actually see. And I I've talked to go ahead. I've talked to inspectors and if they and they've said and again I'm 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 like you know not the super <laughs> expert on these things but they say if I see something like in a crawl space if there's visible mold I would take a surface sample not an air sample. That that would probably be a good idea. So all right. That wraps it up. Thanks, Don, for being here. That was great. And Thank you. I, I appreciate you guys and, and let me come on here and uh, hope we have many more of these. Yeah, for sure we will. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, you can reach out to myself or George Dooling uh, is with us. So I've got his phone number and his email. So feel free to you know reach out to us or Don uh, with more questions. Thanks very much. Thanks. End of the Have session. Bye.